Hello guy, hi everyone, hi guy, hello everyone, welcome back to, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, hi, hi guy, hello everyone, what's up, welcome back, I'm so strange, I don't know how to film videos anymore, I haven't filmed them in like two weeks, all I need is you, baby, baby, Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and honestly, I have not, I don't even remember how to film videos. Like, I'm very shook right now. I have not filmed a video in two weeks, which is so unlike me, and I am just back in my jam today, and I am so excited to kick off 2019. Clearly, I'm already going crazy in 2020 because I still think it's 2019 with a DIYing your DMs video. This has been a video that has been super requested by you guys and I've done them twice on my channel in the past. I definitely want to give credit to the Sorry Girls here on YouTube, which I will make sure to link their channel below for you guys. They actually have a series as well where they DIY your DMs and I saw it on their channel. I was like, this would be so much fun to do on mine and I absolutely love it. I've done two videos in the past, which I'll make sure to put in cards up here if you guys want to check them out. So yeah, basically you guys asked for these projects and I'm going to be delivering them in DIY form for you. And if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new videos here on Lone Fox every single week on home decor, um, DIY, and make sure to click that bell icon next to the subscribe button just so that way you are notified every time I upload brand new videos. I think we're over me speaking at the moment because you guys have literally been neglected of my DIY project recently. So we need to jump right in immediately. So let's get started. The first project I'm going to be creating today was sent over to me by Bren underscore Delport and he or she sent me this image here, which I'm going to pop up on the screen. It's probably easier for you guys to see, but it is basically these really, really cool kind of geometric air plant holders. And there's a wooden version and there's also a cement version. Now I feel like the wooden version is pretty self-explanatory. Like you would just literally get a piece of wood, drill a hole in the top of it and stick that little wire piece in there, which I'm going to show you how to recreate. But I'm going to be doing the cement one today because I want to share with you guys how to create your very own DIY mold. Also mix up the cement, pour it in, and then just create the little wire twister so we can create our very own air plant holder. But let's start crafting up these air plant holders. So jumping into project number one, I'm going to be using a ruler, duct tape, exacto knife, really thick aluminum wire, and also chipboard. And chipboard is basically like a very thick cardstock. It's kind of like what book covers are made of. And what I'm going to start off by doing is using a ruler and pen just to mark out my cut sections. And the cut sections you're going to be needing are four pieces at three and a half by five and a half inches, and then one piece at three and a half by three and a half inches. And the best way to cut this chipboard is to use an exacto knife and a ruler and to just go over the same section multiple times until you reach like the bottom um, and you cut through it. And I also had a piece of wood just to protect my surface. That way the exacto knife didn't like mar my marble surface. So these are the ending result pieces. You're going to need this little three and a half by three and a half piece as well. So what we're doing is we're going to be creating a cube with no top. So how I'm doing this is I'm using duct tape and I'm going to be duct taping these pieces together. And when you duct tape them, make sure to leave about an eighth of an inch in between, as you can see here, uh, then apply the duct tape. That way, when you fold it, there's enough space for it to fold on top of each other and kind of create that joint section. And just cut out any excess uh, duct tape that you don't need anymore. And then we're also going to be attaching all of the sides to each other. That way we have a finished off mold. And the reason I'm making my own mold is typically when I use cement, I could find something like a food container or a Tupperware or something that I can use as my mold. But there was nothing that was super cube shaped like this that I could find. So I decided to make my very own and this was the ending result. So just make sure that everything is nice and secure. You can add additional duct tape if needed. And I went ahead and got some of this concrete mix. This is just from Home Depot. And what I'm going to be doing is just mixing it up with a bit of water to create a really smooth consistency. I like to also only apply little bits of water and then really, really stir it because the water can go a long way. It might look dry, but when you start incorporating it, it can really easily get a lot more wet than you think it is. So then I filled up my mold and I thought this would be enough, but it only filled it about maybe two thirds of the way. So I created another batch of concrete and then just filled it all the way up to the top portion. Once that was done, I knew I needed to create this little wire section. So this wire here is a 12 gauge wire from Joanne's Fabrics. And I just cut a probably like 12 inch piece and I'm just literally spiraling it as shown in the photo. It's a very organic shape, so there's no rhyme or reason to this. And just make sure you leave about a four inch tail as well. That way you can bend a tiny piece and when you stick it down to the concrete, there's no way this is coming back out. So I pushed it down in the center section here. Just kind of hold it there and you could put a toothpick or a stick across 
if you really want to hold it. But after 24 hours, you can go in with your X-Acto knife and just cut away the mold that you created. And keep in mind, guys, that this is going to need probably about two more days to fully dry and kind of turn that light cement color uh, because it's been encased in a mold for a while. So once this has come out, you could sand it, get rid of any edges, and that finishes off your little plant holder. This next project here is one that you guys have been asking me to do for so long. And one of my um, Instagram followers, her name is crown underscore underscore jewels, sent over a message. She said, hi, Drew, I would love for you to create a DIY version of DIY. I think not DIY version of the moon wall hanging in your bathroom. I love it, but I can't seem to find something similar. This is the moon wall hanging. Actually, let me get it for you guys really quick. This right here is actually the moon wall hanging. And I've had this in my bathroom for probably about six years. I got this right when I moved to college. I picked it up at Urban Outfitters. It was like 25 bucks and it was just super cute. I love the way that it looked and I was really into moons at the time and I still really am. I love the way that they look. So I got this in my bathroom. I've had it in there forever and you guys have been asking me to DIY this every single time I do some sort of bathroom video. So I'm basically gonna be recreating this for you guys because it has been very asked for. So let's get started. To start off this next project, we're using that same exact chipboard, just a scrap piece that I had. Um, you can use cardboard, whatever you have on hand. And I'm using these lids to some candy jars to create a circle shape and then using a smaller one, positioning it on the right side and doing about three quarters of that circle to create this moon shape. And like I mentioned previously, the best way to cut this material out is to just go over it multiple times with an X-Acto knife. So this took me uh, probably about 10 minutes to do. It was kind of tedious, but once I got the shape out of there, it looked incredible and it literally looked identical to the one that I got from Urban Outfitters, maybe even a little bit better, not gonna lie. And I used a pen to mark where I wanted my holes to go or where I wanted them to start and finish. Now I have an industrial hole punch. I've just had this for a, a long, long time. So if you don't have one of these, you can literally use like a sewing needle or um, an awl or whatever you do have to create the holes. I just found this was the easiest method to do. And I I also used a little bit of this iridescent golden paint. Well, it's from the brand Golden. And I just gave it a nice coat of this paint. And this is such a pretty kind of shimmery silver. And I also went along the edges with this as well. Originally, I wanted to figure out how I could do this where it was made of metal, but I was just like, I don't know how to cut metal. So I created it out of the chipboard, painted it silver, gave it a nice coat of Mod Podge as well, just to kind of seal it and lock it in. And then I grabbed two spools of chain from Joann's and some jump rings. And the chains that we are gonna be using for this are all cut to 14 inches in length. So I cut, I think about 25 of these 14 inch sections, and you're going to be attaching them to the moon shape with the jump rings. So here we are. I opened them with two pairs of pliers. I slipped the jump ring on the moon shape, slipped the chain through the ring, and then just closed the ring up. It's super, super simple. So once again, opened up the ring, slipped the chain on, slipped it through the next hole and you're gonna be working your way down and then just closing up the ring. And all you have to do is make sure to pull the rings, pull one plier towards you and one plier away and then slip the chain on. And then this is the finished off section. Once you are all fully done adding all your chain pieces on, you can add a little chain to the top, which is gonna be the hanger. Mine actually has a thicker chain, but I was like, I'm just gonna use a thinner chain and I attached it with two rings. That's how you hang it up. And that finishes off your moon hanging. And then the last project is one that I've actually seen on Pinterest before and I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I was like, mm, I'm just gonna put it off for now. And then someone sent it to me and I was like, we're doing it today, which I'm so excited someone sent it to me. So Abby Danielle Rose is who sent it to me. And basically she sent me this image of a coffee table that was constructed of wooden crates. I have about 10 of these wooden crates. You guys have seen me use them underneath my sink in my bathroom storage video. I've used them in past DIY projects, but I also stocked up on like 10 of them when Joann's had their huge sale. I believe they retail for about $10 each, but you can always get it, use a coupon on them, which is great. It is the perfect storage coffee table. It looks incredible and I'm actually putting my own twist on it just to make it feel a little bit more Lone Fox style. And yeah, let's just drew it yourself. You know I had to save the best for last, so I'm using four of these wooden crates from Joann's Fabrics, and I'm also using two pieces of wood. I got these cut to 27 and a half 
by 27 and a half. And I'm also using these small hairpin legs. I featured these on my channel in the past and I'll link them below for you guys. They're from Amazon. So we're going to be working from the tabletop or the top of the table and then working our way up. So I put the top of the table facing down and I placed all four crates as shown on top of the piece of wood. You're basically going to be like locking these together um, in this like grid section and how I'm going to be attaching the tabletop because I do not want there to be any form of screw on the tabletop or anything like that is I'm just using a super strong wood glue and just butting it up to the edge of that piece of wood and just making sure it's pressed down, adding a couple of heavy books on the inside and then working my way around. So you're going to be repeating this process all around and keep in mind that these open sections that are facing the outside are going to act as perfect storage cubbies for really anything you need. That's what I love about this project. So I'm attaching them all around. Now keep in mind also the one that the girl sent me did not have any tabletop to it. It was fully open and they had a plant in the middle, which I just was not a fan of. So I really wanted to add a tabletop to mine. And this is going to be the bottom section here. So what I am doing is just placing down my legs to see where they're going to go. But I wanted to add some glue to the middle section just because I'm going to be adding a ton of screws as a reinforcement to the outside edge, but there wasn't going to be anything really in the center. So I added a ton of glue, placed down the bottom panel on top, kind of added a couple books to the center of there and then it placed all of my hairpin legs on the outside. These hairpin legs are so cute by the way and I used a couple of wood screws just to screw these down through our wood piece and then into the crate. I made sure they were long enough to go all the way through the wood and into the crate. That way it was super super strong bond. So I did this on all four legs. And then once they were done, I also added some reinforcement screws where there was thick pieces of wood, like where the screw would not be shown. So I just added these all around the edge just to reinforce the bottom of this table. You can also add a finish like Danish oil or a wood stain, but honestly on my tabletop, I did not like it. I tried it on the scrap piece of wood. The Danish oil is on the left, the stain is on the right, and I just liked the raw wood itself. So 24 hours later, I flipped this table over and it looked freaking incredible. I am obsessed with this guys, check it out. guys so that was today's little episode of DIYing your DMs I hope that you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed creating it it felt so good getting back into the vibe of things and I'm very very excited for what is coming in 2020 you guys have no idea like what I have planned there are so many room makeovers so many fun things so if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel you can click the red subscribe button below and click the bell icon next to it because you want to be notified when I upload new videos and why are my hands so freaking white look at this they are paper I'm very confused They're like white and pink what is that? And lastly, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Lone Fox Home, and you can DM me projects you would like to see me create here on my channel in this little DIYing your TM series. So I will catch you on the next one. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and yeah. Bye guys. <laughs>